For centuries, scholars have heatedly debated whether nature or nurture is responsible for the behavior of humans. From John Locke in the 17th century up to Francis Galton and Charles Darwin in the 19th century, scholars explored the idea of behavior being influenced by internal and or external cues and what this meant for the development of individual humans. They asked the question, is the way we behave shaped by the people we meet and the things we do? Or is our behavior written in stone, fully formed while we are in the womb? Then, in 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick discovered that human genetic material lies in the structure of a double helix. This brought a whole new perspective to the nature-nurture debate, since human genetic material, or DNA, could be found in a specific location in the body, providing the opportunity to study individual genes and attempting to attribute them to particular traits and behaviors. The work of Watson and Crick gave assurance to the blossoming field of molecular biology. One geneticist, Seymour Benzer, looked at the behavior of Drosophila, commonly known as fruit flies, administering mutations and exposing them to situational tests. Born in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn in 1921, Benzer became unimpressed with the nurture view of behavior upon his entrance into the field of genetics in the late 1950s. Searching for a way to explain behavior at a genetic level, he decided to unite the findings of Watson and Crick with the classic genetics approach and study fruit flies in milk bottles. Three of the more pointed areas of research that Benzer undertook with Drosophila concern genetic influences on time, love, and memory, which he dubbed the three cornerstones of the pyramid of behavior. In 1971, Benzer and his student R.J. Kanavka used ethyl methanous sulfonate to cause random mutations in fruit fly DNA. They were able to isolate a population of flies that had modified inner clock genes by observing irregular hatching patterns in the larva of mutated flies indicating that circadian rhythms, or inner clocks, are genetically influenced. In another set of experiments, Benzer and student Jeff Hall administered mutations in fruit flies to create three different sets of abnormalities portraying a genetic influence on mating patterns. They created a variety of male flies, including celibate, who courted rigorously but never copulated, coitus interruptus, who never engaged in coitus long enough to impregnate, and Stuff, who had difficulty withdrawing his penis after coitus. In a third experiment, Benzer and student Chip Quinn set up test tubes containing flies at one end and deposited specific scented chemicals at the opposite end, paired with either an electric shock or the absence of such. They found that through trials, flies learned to recognize scents that would cause them pain. This indicated that the flies were able to learn from their experience and, through repetition, store memories. From knowing this, Benzer and his students were able to further study the genetics of memory through tracing such learned behaviors across generations of flies. Benzer's work provided elementary support for a genetic influence on certain behaviors. His research supported the thesis that genetics play a central role in influencing behavior. Today, far from over, the nature-nurture battle rages on. Does this mean that either nature or nurture has taken the behavioral gold medal? Let's see what two contemporary scholars have to say. The issue behind the nature-nurture question is whether you think human beings can act against their impulses. That's a difficult question and one that's really been debated for centuries and, and one that people can legitimately disagree about. Uh, Rousseau in the second discourse that you all read in Cornerstone says that yes you can and that that's what distinguishes you from other creatures. Um, that's what makes you human in some really important way. And I think you understand this from your everyday life. You don't act on all your impulses. If you merely acted out of instincts, um, then you might be led to all kinds of terrible behaviors. Let's just say uh, mating behaviors, which you mentioned before, uh, rape is against the law. We just say that you can't do it. You might be tempted to uh, want to mate with somebody who doesn't want to mate with you. Well, that's, guess what? You don't get to. In other words, society says, no, that's wrong. You know, you can't do that. And most of us, for the most part, most of the time, 
are able to restrain our instincts and our desires and live in society according to certain set of rules. So if you could rephrase the question according to whether you think and how you think free will or at least restraint plays a, plays a role in your human nature, then I think we can have a good, a long discussion about that. I think it brings up this false dichotomy that it's either nature or nurture. And there are people in both camps. But I can tell you as a biologist, um, as a molecular type, um, I don't subscribe to biological determinism in the extreme sense. Um, again, as I mentioned, I think a lot more of our behaviors are out of our conscious control than we want to believe. But that I'm, I would certainly never imply that the influence of environment is important. But I think what's important to realize is that even if there are, are environmental influences, and there absolutely are in many different behaviors, they are working through a biological foundation. And so in that sense, I would see different behaviors as being more or less uh, likely to be influenced by the nurture side, depending on the particular behaviors. So maybe there's a third way of thinking about this that's not, it's either genetics or it's nature, and I think there's probably a more nuanced way of saying, given human nature, and we can argue about what that was, but clearly we have certain things we do and that, that are part of being humans. Um, given that, well, how do we, how do we react? What do societies do? Nurture or experience plays itself out on a biological foundation. And so they're both intimately linked, and you, you can't separate the two. The idea of nature versus nurture uh, is an idea that should die. Perhaps the nature-nurture debate is not so black and white as one might think. Although genetics do play a central role in influencing behavior, environmental and biological factors work in unison to influence behavior as a whole.